Institute's ideas have been really shaping the city of Portland for decades now. His latest involves the Wapato Jail and turning it into a homeless shelter. Now, we've heard about this before, but real estate magnate Jordan Schnitzer believes he and others can really make it happen. He's here with an update on this property. And Jordan, first of all, tell us about your plan. Well, as you know, this isn't just a Portland problem. Uh, we're seeing across the country an increasing amount of homeless people. And if we look at the baby boomers and the aging, uh, this is a problem that's not going to go away soon. So you purchased the jail. And yes. what has happened since that purchase? So we purchased the jail at a price that would allow us to tear it down and build a warehouse. But that's not our hope. Our hope is that by working with other proven providers in the community, we can come together and put together a coalition of providers, of professionals that know how to deal with drug abuse, alcohol abuse, uh, homeless kids on the street, uh, folks that just have um, uh, that statement there for the sake of God go I, where a number of events happen in their life and they just feel a bit broken. They need a hand to help get them back into society. You know, this is, I would imagine, such a big project. Just listening to you talk about all the, the players involved to make that happen, what realistically would be a timeline for this project? I think we're working the next 60, 90 days to make a full court press. Uh, Homer Williams, a visionary developer in town, he's working with a group from San Antonio, a haven of hope. They operate a 1,400 bed, 26 acre facility. They came up uh, two weeks ago with a team of four people to analyze the facility. I reached out to an old friend who I respect so much in this area, Kay Turan, who's the CEO of Volunteers of America. They have a $25 million budget. They do a fabulous job with alcohol rehab, seniors, juvenile delinquents that have been thrown out of every program, after school programs, unwed mothers. And I think it's smart for us to go to existing providers, because uh, certainly I don't, and I'm sure you don't have the professional skills in this area to know exactly what to do. So these folks have been visiting the property yes. to let you know the feasibility of turning this into a full-time shelter. I guess the obstacle continues to be, though, Jordan, the location so far from the city. I think that's true. And yet I think we need to look at it from the standpoint of what can be done instead of what can't be done. In other words, if we don't dream and try, we won't know. Uh, I've also reached out to some faith-based groups. I've reached out to the uh, Episcopal Bishop, uh, Bishop Michael Henley, and asked if uh, he and the 70 Episcopal churches in the state would be supportive if we found the right program of stepping in. I've met with the Ecumenical Council of Churches. Uh, I've met with someone from uh, 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 the Catholic Charities, and still need to meet with the board of rabbis, Muslim groups, whatever. But we first need a program, then try to figure out how to fund it, which will be a monstrous issue. But the one thing I know, and I think everyone listening to this program knows, the problem is immense. Mm -hmm. And my heart goes out as I think every Portlander and every Oregonian when we see people on the street. Mm -hmm. And my heart also goes out to the merchants and neighbors that the people are in there. Yeah backyards and that's not fair either. Yeah, well keep us posted. Come we'll back as it. you get closer and let us know how things are going. One thing is if we don't try, we won't know. Uh, yeah, we appreciate you stopping by for the update. Thanks for having us. Yeah, coming Bye. up on Portland Today,